Long ago, the four nations lived together in harmony. Then, everything changed when the Fire Nation attacked. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you don't know who this be, it's your girl Kyrie B coming at you with a new video. So today we're going down memory lane, getting a little bit of nostalgia, and we're going to be talking about Avatar The Last Airbender. So, if you don't know what Avatar The Last Airbender is, it's an animated cartoon drama that is on that has been on Nickelodeon from 2005 to 2008. It has three seasons. And yeah, it's in short about an avatar who has the ability to possess four different types of bending. Water, water earth, fire, fire, air. So, and to help restore the balance in the world. I mean, the show is basically fiction. Probably the only animated anime type show that I actually watched when I was younger and liked. If you don't know what Avatar is, then it's on Netflix. Just go watch it. You know, really good. So recently, Avatar has been, you know, back on Netflix. This is not the first time Avatar has been on Netflix. It's been on Netflix back in like 2012-13 and then they removed it after that and then we haven't seen Avatar since. So now that they brought it back was just like oh wow. So yeah so I got left off on from Avatar with season 2 episode 3 and I just I think I picked up on the episode of Return to Amashu where Aang was trying to find um, Boomy so he can learn how to earthbend. So with that being said, I watched from season 2 recently to the end. I don't think in the first go around like growing up, I actually never saw season 3 so I didn't even know what transpired or how the final battle went you know who was Aang supposed to fight you know what I'm saying because he was always fighting Zuko and you know trying to run away from Zuko, Zuko or outrun Zuko and then it turns up that he had to fight Zuko's father Ozai so the show is very good um probably it's gotten a 100% on Rotten Tomatoes and that's very rare for Rotten Tomatoes to get a 100% on a show but it's got a 100% and it's basically acclaimed as one of the best animated shows right now so that's saying something so if you haven't watched Avatar The Last Airbender you should watch it so, like, my little, you know, finally watching season 3 for the first time was just very, like, oh wow, like, shock-worthy, a little nostalgia here and there, like, remembering, you know, childhood. So, um, Avatar The Last Airbender was basically a cultural reset. A cultural reset. So in season two, we got Toph, you know, teaching Aang how to earth bend, and you know they go to the Earth Kingdom. They got there, and then they find out that people are basically, you know, it's a taboo to talk about the war that's been going on for over a hundred years, which is like, oh, what war? Which is like Avatar basically talks about a lot of different you know, topics and subjects for a cartoon like, you know, kid like show. It talks a lot about a, different topics that you wouldn't expect, you know, a cartoon TV show to talk about. And, you know, it's not just like some something funny and I mean 
just like time wasting because there's so many people who actually get into the show get involved you know me watching it over like i was just so involved with it because it's just like it's not like like no like spongebob is still a really good cartoon but it's not like spongebob where you just laugh and you know it's just there's no like you know destination that you're trying to take with a cartoon see with this cartoon there was a destination there was a ending point there was a mission that you know Aang was supposed to complete so it was just like adventurous you know seeing the tribulations and journeys I think season 3 episode 17 the episode where there was like a play that you know showcases you know team avatars you know journey from start to you know present was really interesting to share like their whole journey of when Aang was found in the iceberg to you know them you know Zuko being on team Avatar one of the most shocking things was season two like that last episode of season two was when Zuko you know teamed up with Azula and basically was gonna take down Aang and like capture Aang and whatnot and then Aang you know he was in the avatar state he he was gonna like protect them protect Katara and everybody else and then Azula just stro striked him with lightning and to be honest if it wasn't for Katara you know not using the little spirit water on you know Zuko and like having it to use on Aang, Aang would have been dead like because there is like the whole myth or not the whole myth but the whole thing that if you you know are killed in the avatar state there you can't like they can't cycle the whole avatar thing so that will be the end of the avatar like for good so if you get killed in the avatar state that's the end of the avatar so he basically got killed in the avatar state but if it wasn't for the miracle water the spirit water that Katara had to save him that would have been the end of the avatar so it was just like very shocking like that you know ending of season two was so so shocking i didn't even know who may and ty lee were and like up and like and just recently because i'm just like who's may and ty lee so may when may was like i'm not gonna listen to azula like when she was teen on um, when may like decided to save zuko and then ty lee was like yeah i'm just done listening to you azula as well that was like oh snap that was the biggest oh snap moment because that moment basically brought the downfall of azula mentally you know everything started crashing down on her she started to be insecure not you know trust anybody you know she didn't want it she didn't want to have her servants she you know her friends turned her back on her she didn't want her servants anymore you know she thought you know having people fear her was the best you know i guess it started with her mother her mother not i guess being more involved with zuko than her kind of stemmed her forward but azula has been mean from a child like you obviously saw the flashback you know showcasing you know how zuko was always trying to get his father's honor he was basically a mama's boy you know because he was always with his mother and you know that one day that his mom just basically left it was always it's so it's till to this day it's still a mystery where his mom is like where did she go but you kind of figured out that she kind of sacrificed herself because zuko's grandfather wanted ozai to kill zuko because ozai wanted to have Iroh's birthright because since Iroh's older than Ozai he wanted to get Iroh's birthright to be the next 
you know, the next, um, you know, king of, or f the next Fire Lord, because Iroh's son died, because it was supposed to be Iroh's son to be the next Fire Lord, because it's, you know, lineage, I mean, unless Iroh and Iroh's son was dead, then it would have been Ozai, so he basically, Ozai basically killed his father, and then now he became the next thing, um, next Fire Lord, because obviously, I mean, if he denounces, you know, Iroh's birthright to be a Fire Lord, then that's how it happened, so. I'm just ran rambling on because there's just so much. It was like, like, the history, what, what makes this show so good is because there's so much history and, not real history, but so much, like, history and, like, stories to go underneath the present day. Like, why did this happen? Why did this happen? For so long, I thought Aang's tattoos was because he was the Avatar. Not because dude was a fi um, an heir, an heir nomad, because he was a master, like, airbender. Because that's where his, that's how he get his tattoos, is because he mastered airbending, not because he's the Avatar. I was just like, oh snap. So as I was saying, I always thought Aang's tattoos was because he was the avatar because he always had on he always had to like they always mentioned that they always had to cover his tattoos yeah so i always forget the reason why ang always had to cover his tattoos because like every time you go to like a different you know nation he always had to wear a hat and i always like i always went i wanted to tweet this out i was like they got ang looking like joe with a, a blue cap like every time and goes to like a different city or nation or whatever he's wearing a he they put a hat on him like oh that's not ang they put a, a hat on him while he's wearing the same exact clothes you got ang looking like joe from you because joe be wearing a, a blue cap thinking he's gonna be invisible blending in some of my favorite like moments of the series like i was super shocked that ang had hair in season three Cause I was just like, um, cause I saw memes of Aang with hair and I was like, eh, that's just a, that's just an edit. I saw season three, dude had hair and I'm like, so you're telling me Aang shaves his head like every day, every week? Because how you knocked out for a week or in a coma or whatever for a week and then you grew a whole head of hair. I was just confused. I was just like, is that a? Is that a? So let's talk about the whole slow burn of it all. Katara and Aang, Aang and, and Katara. So from season one, it was a slow burn building up that there was something there. And it wasn't until season two where he you know, you know, straight up told other people and was like, he really loves Katara. And he tried multiple times to tell Katara that he actually liked her, but you know, he got, something happened, something, you know, came in his way, they didn't have enough time, so, and I think the same episode with, they did the play, they like joked around about how Katara seems Aang as a brother and not like as someone she would really like. So he like confronted Katara about that, you know, seeing like what does she think about it, of him because he really likes her. Like, you know, when he was trying to learn how to, you know, master the Avatar state, he literally left, like, like stop, like stop the completion of it because he wanted to go save Katara. He didn't want to leave, let go of Katara. All that stuff. And the ending, the final kiss ending was like so, like, that was just really touching. Like the way that they did the final ending with Aang and Katara kissing. And the thing is, is that like there was no word spoken. Like the last thing Aang said was to Zuko talking about like how they're best friends. Like, you know, Aang just sat back and he just like, 
when Sokka was like drawing the picture or portrait of them, you know, sat back and you know took it in. Then he went out for a walk. Katara followed after him, and then they like do this whole gazing, looking at each other type thing, and you know, hugged and then kissed, and it was just that was the end. And it was just like, whoa, you know, that was just really sweet. Like that was the biggest slow burn of them all. I mean, people ship Zuko and Katara. I mean, I kind of can see where it can go, but it was nothing like Aang and Katara. Aang and Katara, you know, really grew together. I just saw like a whole, you know, you know, summarize, you know, I guess love story of Aang and Katara on YouTube. And they basically gave you every detail or like reason why they're the superior ship. Um, Zuko and Katara, like you're really just leaving Mei in the dust by just shipping Zuko and Katara. Like who are you gonna ship Mei with? Where does Mei go? You're just gonna like, leave Mei out of here while Mei literally like said to said to Zula, I fear, I love Zuko more than I fear you. Straight up, point blank, and still went to jail after Zuko had to go on his own journey and he had to break it break up with her and she still saved him so how are you gonna do May 30 like that I won't have it I won't have it but if you guys do ship Zuko and Katara then there there shouldn't be any slander here I mean I can see where it goes but there's there's just not it's just not it you know it's just not it you know and Katara really good the scene where you know they were in the Fire Nation outfits and he was like teaching the Fire Nation children how to dance and then he told Katara like you know ask Katara to dance with him that whole dancing scene cultural reset let me stop but it was just so good because I was just like Oh snap. Aang has some Aang has some moves. Aang has some moves. You know some dancing moves and some figurative, you know, moves. So it was just like that was like probably my favorite episode between them because, you know, Katara was kinda of getting jealous because Aang had like somebody you know kind of like entertaining somebody but not really and then he was just like it's just me and you in the room and i was like okay okay Aang. yeah don't worry about them it's just us the fight between ang and ozai that was very like the whole design and graphics of it was really good how they have it set up and you know, the ending, I feel like it really wrapped it up really well because Aang was having a battle between, you know, should I kill Lord Ozai? Like, how do I actually defeat him? And if he didn't go on his little disappearing act thing, he wouldn't have known to bend energy and like take away his fire bending energy, which was like really, you know, kept intact his, you know, his own self while still doing what he was meant to do which was restore balance to the world and I feel like that was a pretty good ending um, also I liked how all the books like the seasons were books so book one was water book two was earth and book three was fire and you know each has like a different type of story going leading up to Sozin and Car the four part Sozin and comment thing and I just thought it was really thought out. Um, I like the fact that, you know, this show wasn't canceled. The show actually knew they only wanted three books or three seasons and they knew how to wrap it up really well. You know what I'm saying? Like, they weren't on the, like, if they wanted to continue with a fourth season, they probably could have and, you know, would have been even still successful. So I feel like, you know, they knew this is you know their stopping point for the show and that's what they wanted to do also i find it so interesting how Aang basically mastered all four elements in like 
such a short amount of time. Like, he learned earth bending, you know, in like probably a week. He mastered fire bending in a day when he went to the sun, you know, this, I don't know, the sun area where he found out like the, the masters worked with the dragons. Like, he easily learned like earth fire bending that quick. Earth bending real quick. Water bending took enough time to master. And then he was already out of the gate a master of air bending. So it's just like oh snap. And it's like trying to find out these ages. So Aang is twelve, thirteen, Katara's fourteen, Sokka's fifteen, and Zuko is sixteen. And I think Zuko, Azula, they all are like teenagers. So I think when they went to that little beach that beach house episode or that little summer house episode was probably very much an underrated episode because they all you kind of find out a little bit more in depth with each character you know find out why Tylee the way she is May the way she is why Zuko was angry and you know Azula she kind of touched on you know why she's always mean kind of I feel like they need to, if they're going to make another, you know, Avatar, they should, you know, try to see what happened between Aang and Guitar and the rest of the gang in the years after, you know, they restore balance. You know what I'm saying? Because, I mean, as I heard from Legend of Guitar, Legend of Korra, you know, they kind of like touched on Aang and Guitar and his children a little bit. Which was, you know, I guess okay, but not what everyone expected. I want to see what happened leading up to where Legend of Korra kind of happened. I never watched Legend of Korra. Probably not going to. But <clears throat> I heard that Netflix is making a live action remake. Which I feel like just make an animated one that you know, expands on what happened after Aang turned, like, you know, defeated Ozai. Because there's still a lot of loose ends you could have picked back up. You know, there's still a lot of, like, things you could have unraveled. So, the best thing of this show was that there was a character foil. That, you know, this is also Aang's story, but it's also Zuko's story at the same time. And, you know, we have this person who's supposed to save the world, Aang, with Zuko, bad guy, the villain, who end up being on the good side, Aang's side, at towards the end. You have this character arc of, you know, Zuko trying to find himself. You know, you have Iroh leading him, leading the way for him, and try to help him, you know. Iroh asked the important questions was, what do you want? You know, who do you want to be? You know, what is your destiny? All these different questions to Zuko because Zuko is like, oh, I want to regain my honor. I want to make my father proud, blah, 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 blah. And then, you know, he kind of end up, you know, not choosing the right path and then finding his own path to, you know, join Teen Avatar. And it kind of was interesting to show, you know, at first, he wasn't, you know, trusted into the Team Avatar group, you know, at, at first, you know, apologizing, you know, it wasn't just like, oh, I'm nice now, I change, can I be in the group, you know, it was like, you know, you have to make it up to us, you actually, you know, you've been chasing me all this time, and now you want me to forgive you and allow you to be in our group, so... It was very a good character for how, you know, he, you know, wants to kill the and defeat the Avatar to him, you know, becoming on his side. And that's like probably the best thing about this series is that there's two stories. There's like two stories in one. You have Fire Nation Zuko and then Aang with Katara and Sokka's, you know, story. If you like this video, like this video, 
comment down below let me know what you think and if you haven't subscribed to my channel subscribe anyway thank you guys for watching peace